Hi everyone, welcome back to the radio shop. Well, it's ICOM IC745 week, so uh, we got a few of these to get repaired. Um, <laughs> it's going to be quite a bit of work, but we'll go on through it and get through it and uh, see what we can do. You can see we have quite a bit of them to get to, and uh, the first one we'll probably go ahead and jump on is this one. I think this will be the easiest one to fix. It has a uh, very loose uh, VFO knob, and it's dropping out on some of the bands, so we know that the VCO trimmers are gone in these, and you know, ICOM used those plastic trimmers inside of these radios, and they always go out because you know plastic changes over time and starts every time the plastic moves it changes capacitance on the trimmers and it doesn't take much to get the VCO um, voltage to you know unlock the system so we're going to look at going and fixing this one first then at the end we're going to talk a little bit about uh, the uh, RAM modules that are inside the uh, ICOM 745s and 751s. Now you know you can buy replacement RAM modules that are not have volatile memory in them and what that means is if this battery goes dead these chips go dead. Radio becomes a brick. So we're going to talk a little bit about coming up with a way to reprogram these after replacing the batteries and the old days you did it in DOS well I no longer have a DOS computer, so <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll talk about a little bit at the end. So stay tuned and we'll get right on into it. I've got this uh, ICOM 745 on the uh, bench today. And man, does it have some problems. Uh, <laughs> I'll turn it up. And you can hear that noise checked out the VFO. You see how loose the uh, shaft is in there. So we seem to have several problems with this radio. One thing, the VFO for some reason is loose. I don't know if there's something broken or something has uh, come loose inside, but this is going to have to be the first thing we're going to check. We'll get that fixed. Next thing we're going to do is replace the, uh, the VCO trimmers and get all that situated in a line. And we're also going to put in a new RAM board and remove the old uh, RAM board from ICOM and see can't we get this uh, thing up and running but uh, yeah that's let's just tell you to get to the point where it won't even move so something in there is definitely uh, gone wrong I know that the uh, trimmers is bad because you can see 24 and 28 is completely out. Set the band. They won't even uh, won't even come in. So we'll have to look at that and see what we can do. All right. So I guess we'll go ahead and get all the screws out of it and get inside and see what we can find. So you see, I got all the knobs off and. Uh, what I'm doing now is going to remove this microphone connector and we all know that it uh, has a ring around it with four slots and to do that I just took a piece of tubing that I made quite a while back and I uh, cut the end off but I left two notches on it this way this slides right over the uh, mic jack 
the two pins engages the ring and we're able to uh, screw that little nut right off they just uh, fit right in there just like that and it makes a handy little tool I think this one is 5 eighths of an inch but that really helps to get those uh, mic connectors off okay so I had to loosen up the uh, front panel so I could slide something out of the way and then uh, I can get down there and we can see our VFO shaft now and you can see just how loose it is luckily the only thing it is hopefully is the uh, nut on it is loose that has uh, came loose over the years so we'll get that and tighten it up okay we'll get down here and uh, put a wrench on that snug it up just a little bit and that should hold that in place now now I'm going to put the front panel back together. <laughs> You can see uh, the VFO is acting like it's supposed to now. I just stuck it back on there. I ain't put all the knobs on it yet. Just put enough on them to get it going. But yeah, that VFO was really uh, causing some havoc. <laughs> but yeah, she's good to go on that. And she spins around very nicely now. They put a little Loctite on that nut so uh, it wouldn't come loose again. Okay, I'll go ahead and get the front end finished up here, and then I guess we'll get into the uh, the VCO and uh, get those can uh, pulled off of it and have a look at those trimmers. Okay, so I want to do a little test right quick, and uh, as you can see, I went ahead and removed the uh, shield off the top of the PLL unit. And you see these are all these VCO uh, trimmers here, there's four of them here. Each for a range, uh, different, you know, band range. And as you can see, we're on 14 megahertz. And that's 24, if you notice, we were not able to get anything on... 24 megahertz that's 28 megahertz so the 24 and 28 megahertz is band uh, is is working now just for moving the uh, cover off the uh, VCO trimmer board so uh, you can see just how sensitive these areas are The next step now is to go ahead and remove this uh, PLL board. That way we can get to the bottom of it and better remove the old trimmers. 
As we can see inside here, this is C107. This is C97. C88. And the last one is C78. So to remove this board, you just a couple of connectors here. There'll be one RF coax here, uh, two ribbon gables, and this green wire that goes up here to the local oscillator board will have to be removed. Then we remove six screws, and this board will lift right out. Never grab these wires and pull the connectors out by the wires. If you do, you will end up pulling the wires completely out of the uh, connector and that makes for a bad day so that is something you do not want to uh, do and I believe that's all the wires six of these screws removed and we should be able to lift this board right out of here And there we have it. Now, at one time, ICOM used to put this white wax inside of this uh, VCO can. And it was to help, you know, stabilize, keep components from moving around. And would stop microphonics. They I think they later found out that sometimes it would come, become conductive and would cause problems in the VCO. And if you notice now, they do not put the in these uh, cans in the, uh, the later models. So uh, we can see here, we have those plastic trimmer caps here. There's two blue ones and two red ones here. And uh, what we got is two 12 picofarads and two 6 picofarads. So we need to go ahead and get those removed out of here. But before you can remove those, you turn the board over and you see this shield here. So you'll need to desolder this shield from these ground planes. So I'll go ahead and get that done off camera. Alright, so now that we got the shield off, we can go ahead and start removing these trimmers. do is go ahead and get most of the solder off of them Definitely do not want to uh, damage your circuit board. And that I got the uh, solder off, I'm able to get under the tab and just give it a little rock. Should be falling right out. I 
you never don't want to use your equipment to uh, be in component leads. And that's why you want to try to get most of the solder off. Alright, I believe we have that all cleared up now. You can see uh, two of them has already fell out. That's the third one. And there goes the fourth one. Yep, plastic tremors. Why? <laughs> I guess someone had a better idea at the time. So a little tip about installing uh, ceramic trimmers. We look at our board, we can see where trimmers go. And you can see that uh, it's silk screen on the uh, circuit board. And the little bar represents the flat side of the trimmer. And when you look on the back side, you can see this large ground area and then this would be the hot side of the trimmer that would be the ground side now if you install this trimmer come on focus in uh, that orientation where this flat is at the ground your rotator is the one going to the positive side and to verify that Set the trimmer down here. And we'll take our continuity tester. Uh, let me put it on the other trimmer here. And we'll go to this side. To the little screw on the top. And we see we have continuity there. So that's your rotor. And that's the side you want to ground. And on this trimmer, you can see it is the round side. The flat side is the hot. So disregard the uh, silk screen on the board. And always make sure that your rotator is on the ground side. So I'm going to go ahead and get these installed. And get them soldered in place. Okay, we're now ready to uh, retune our VCO trimmers on our ICOM IC745 and uh, PL lock voltage needs to be set so mode is RTTY display frequencies 7.9999 megahertz we'll connect an oscilloscope to R46 on the PLL unit and we're looking for 6.5 volts in the VCO and we'll start with trimmer number 78 So trimmer number 78 is right here. We have R46 is right here. And what we'll do, we'll adjust this trimmer for 6.5 volts on 7.9999 megahertz. I'll have our scope set up on 7 volts per division. And I have the measure feature on. And what we're looking here is you see the 4.414243 volts it's kind of changing back and forth a little bit because it's out of a tolerance but if you look right here you will see the uh, 4.4 volts and we're going to adjust R78 I mean C78 for 6.5 volts That was going down. That's five five point eight volts. Six point two one volts. 
That's 6.54 volts. So that is close enough, no problem. Now manual tells us to set the frequency for 14.9999 megahertz and we'll adjust C88 for 6.5 volts. Okay, you see we're at looks like 8.25 volts. So we need to bring this one down to 6.5 volts. There we go, we're climbing down now. A little bit too far. And now we're at 6.55 volts, which is close enough. Right now we're going to go to 21.9999 megahertz. And this does help if you mash the uh, ham genie mode. This puts you in general coverage mode. And you're able to get the uh, frequency dialed in a lot better. So now we're going to go to tremor C96. And we're roughly at 6.94. Okay, our last adjustment will be on 30.0015 megahertz, and we're going to adjust C107. And again, we're at 8.25 volts, so let me see if we bring it down. 7.5, 6.89. Six point five five, six point five four. All right, and that's close enough. You don't have to be right di directly on it. Um, that point five is not going to uh, bother anything at all. So, if you noticed, uh, I omitted the first couple of steps in the PLL alignment, and there was a thought process behind that. I wanted to make sure that we could tune these voltages in the PLL range. If uh, we went through all the trouble to um, set all these adjustments and then get here and we're out of range, then you know we would have to pull the uh, VCO cover back off again and troubleshoot what went wrong you know sort of bridge a uh, bad capacitor anything could cause it from not working right so now we'll go back and we can go through this whole alignment again and we can be sure that our VCO tuning range will be spot on so the first uh, adjustment is the first local oscillator we'll set the mode to RTTY 30.0015 megahertz We'll connect the frequency counter to R4 on the RF unit and we want to adjust for 100.4530 megahertz by adjusting L2. So what we'll do, we'll connect here to uh, R4. It's under a little cover up here on the RF board. we we'll have to remove this little shield. This particular radio still had the coating on the resistor so I had to scrape it out and I've got the uh, frequency counter probe connected to it then we're going to go down here back on the PLL board and we're going to adjust L2 which is at the front of the PLL board and what we want to adjust it for is 100.4530 megahertz and as you can see we're not far off we're at 100.4528 we need to bring this up just a little bit. That's 100.4530.2.1. That's close enough. 
so that sets the uh, local oscillator, the first local oscillator. So our next step here is the LPL lock voltage. We'll go mode RTTY and we'll set the display to 8 MHz. We'll be on the PLL board, we'll connect the oscilloscope to R202 on the PLL unit and we're going to adjust L201 for 3 volts. So looking at the PLL board, R202 is right here beside this big can at the front. And you'll connect to the side that's closest to the can. As you can see, it'll actually have CP for checkpoint written up here beside it right down here. And the uh, L201 is in this little hole here. And I've already connected to it and don't even have to adjust it because it's at 3.1 volts. So now we're going to go back and we'll connect back over here to uh, R46. And we'll verify all the voltages on the PLL once more just to be sure that they are correct. We need to go to 7.99 megahertz. And we're still at 6.5 volts. We'll go down to 14.99 megahertz. We'll go up in this case. And we're still on 6.54 volts. Now we'll go to 21.99 megahertz. Six point five O volts are right on the money. And then down to thirty point zero zero one five. And we still have all six point five volts. So the last thing that we have to do on this IC745 is replace this RAM module because we all know that if uh, this little battery ever goes bad this radio then becomes a brick because all your factory programming is done on these chips on this board and if the battery goes dead these old chips lose their memory so the radio would no longer function. Luckily, uh, a couple of companies have come out with replacement boards that has non-volatile uh, programming on them, which means if the battery goes dead, it does not lose its base programming and your radio holds its frequency set. So we're going to install this. Now, I know I've done a video on or several videos on the IC745 and I won't want to do this one but I actually have three more of these in stock to work on so <laughs> yeah they've been keeping me uh, pretty busy here on the uh, 745s lately Let me get this little board out of its package But I had also said in one of my other videos, I was going to try to come up with a way to read the RAM out of these boards. And I do have somewhere around here the programmer to do that with. It uses a CD4040 chip and an old DOS computer running on the parallel port. Well, the problem is I no longer have an old DOS computer that would do that. So as you see, this is the uh, the new board. And it has a uh, battery here on the back. And you have uh, two chips here. 
and there's a small driver chip down here. Okay, so you see here's the new board, and this one is uh, set up for the IC745. The programming is in this EEPROM here, and it does not lose its memory that holds the uh, frequency set for the uh, stock factory programming. On the back there is a battery, and what this battery does, it holds memory in this chip for your programming when you decide you want to program frequencies in this is where all this is stored at so the uh, thing is you know we just pop this in and you're all done you don't never have to worry about losing your memory so to do this make sure all power has been uh, removed We'll lift up this ribbon cable and get it out of the way. And we'll go ahead and pull this ribbon cable out too. And you can see the round board sitting there. Now there should be a couple of screws that hold this in place. I am only seeing one in this board. So I'll go ahead and remove that screw. screw out that out of the way now Icon made two different boards for these radios a B and an A version and uh, one has two chips on it and the other one has one chip I'm just use this little pick here to pry up on this And there we have it. Come up right out of there with no problems. And you can see this one has the uh, two chips on it. The other version has only one chip. So to put this back in, you just need to make sure you line up all these pin headers correctly. And I believe it'll make it a whole lot easier if I remove this little unit here and get it out of the way so we can make sure we program directly, I mean, push it directly into the pins. Okay, I removed this little unit here on the side, one with three screws holding it in. And this will help with better get this in here and make sure we get these pins lined up correctly. Now before I put this in, I did want to show you this. This is the uh, board made by, I believe they pronounce it Pi-X. And uh, as you can see, it has an EEPROM. And there's another PROM here. And a battery clip. And there's a couple of more ICs. And there's been part numbers rubbed off of it. So you can't duplicate it as easy. And it holds the battery in the back of it. Now they use the regular plastic connectors on the back so this thing just drops right in and this company that made this one did not rub any information off the boards they're all completely the same so just to show you, you know, the difference in the way different people have made this board over the years and the footprint is uh, identical the only thing I find on both of these boards is that they're not quite separated far enough apart 
and you won't have to bend these pins in just a little bit just to get it started in there. So as you can see buried under the cables here our new board is installed. It's a little tricky getting those pins lined up just right and um, you know press it down and it holds pretty good. Now this unit uses the uh, round type receptacle um, plugs that go over those little pins and it fits in there pretty tight. There's no way to bolt this back down with the screw that you would normally bolt it with and you know it's it's probably going to be pretty tight as i said there's no there's no way to, to secure it back to the main board like the original board was but i think it's okay like i say it went on pretty tight and it fit in there and that's all you do to replace this module you don't have to do anything special or anything so uh the rig should now be back up and running So the 745 is uh, all back together and everything checks out real good on it. I'm on the dummy load and if you'll listen. You can hear picking up a station back there. And it was a N2 call. So even on the dummy load, <laughs> it still receives great. And that's one reason why I've always liked the uh, IC745 is because it does have a great receiver and that was with the preamp off. And that's with the preamp on. So, you know, great radio. Now, Icon listed this radio as an all mode rig. And technically it is not it does have AM FM upper lower sideband CW and RTTY the thing is is that when you go over to AM mode and you press the mic button you get a transmit light but nothing happens so they do not have AM transmit so uh, I think that's what kept a lot of the uh, CBers away from these because they did not transmit on AM. There is a modification for that and I have yet to perform that modification and I would love to try it one day. So I have uh, one of these of my own that I might just give it a whirl and see how it turns out. Documentation is not the best. Um, it's kind of written old school like in a DOS program and uh, there's no pictures they just use uh, you know it was done like in basic <laughs> it's, it's how it's playing I'll show it to you in, in just a moment but uh, yeah, I would love to get one of these in AM because I hear that they sound pretty decent in AM uh, even with the stock filtering that's in them so I'd love to give it a try and see So here on the computer it's talking about how to modify the rig for AM and it shows you as you can see it's just all typed up here on uh, showing the different connectors inside and here it's showing a transistor with a 10 ohm uh, 10k ohm resistor and a 1 in 9 14 diode so you know it just this is how it shows the schematic and it shows what goes to where. So it'll be very interesting to try this. You can see just how they did a dode just to show you how the toad looks. And you know it's, it's crude but it's understandable. But it's quite a bit of work to go in th here through to get this thing working on the AM mode. Quite a bit of a modification but it looks doable. So the modification consists of eight pin diodes and it gives you the factory part, part numbers are 1N914s which is fine, 3 10K resistor quarter watt and 1NPNTO92 package 
switching transistor like the 2N3904 equivalent. So it's not a whole lot of um, parts, but you know, it's more than just a way a lot of the uh, normal rigs are. You go and you clip one wire or un unsolder a resistor or something that goes to work. Um, this is not considered the Mars mod. It's just the uh, transmit and able for AM mode. So back to the RAM module, uh, well the one that we use is by Roberto Nardo IK2RND and uh, this is his website showing the board how it's made and uh, this, this picture was one for a 751 and it shows the installation and how to do your presets and stuff if you want to save that information so you know what it is so uh, you know it's, very nice board and it's, this one was 54 bucks plus uh, I think $11 shipping what he has yes $54 plus $11 shipping so not too bad and it should work just fine but to get back to what I was wanting to do is that this is a uh, programmer using a CD4040 IC chip and it only consists of the CD4040, a 7805, and a couple of capacitors tied to an 8 volt source. And you would plug your module into these two header pins. And then you use a DB25 to go to a parallel port on a DOS computer. Well, we all know that DOS computers are hard to come by. I did have a, one up and running until a couple of years ago. And I actually built this circuit quite a while ago to read the contents out of us IC745. The thing is now, you know, we cannot remove the chip from the uh, original RAM board. Because if you do, you know, it's going to lose its memory. So as you can see, the... Uh, Information is stored in the IC chip and this battery holds it in there. Once this battery goes dead, this memory is erased and it's gone. So what we would have to do is be able to build an interface that this would plug into and then interface it through USB into a computer to read the information and to write the information back. So somewhere around the shop I do have a program I built years ago but I cannot locate it. <laughs> it has been a while ago. But it's uh, I've already got some header pins and I'll cut one side off and only use one of them and then we'll put these in the uh, circuit board and, and solder them down and then we can connect the CD 4040 to one side so you know that's no problem to do but the problem is it's still interfacing to a new modern computer so if anyone has any ideas on uh, how to come up with it I will put all this information on my website showing the original schematic and how this board is uh, plugged into the programmer so if anybody can come up with a way to convert that over to USB I would greatly appreciate it anyway so as you can see I still have uh, <laughs> plenty more IC 745s to go through and each one of them have uh, different problems and you know these radios come in many flavors the one there on the right it has the uh, built-in power supply the one in the middle also has the built-in power supply and you can see on the top it has the IC P515 external power supply and an automatic antenna tuner that has to be gone through so there's three pieces on this one that has to be worked on now I do not recommend using the internal power supply they wasn't that good they're a little bit noisy but you know they do work so if uh, 
you have one of those uh, there's some upgrades you can go in and do so we'll be showing that in the future video and then we have the one there on the left that has no power supply at all and runs directly off of a external power supply so uh, yeah still plenty more of these to work through and hopefully I can come up with something for uh, reading and writing through that RAM board yes you can go out and you can buy the uh, the drop-in modules but I still think it's cool to be able to you know take the uh, old unit inside and go in and and read and write to it and program it and get them things up and running I mean you put a new battery in it uh, mine has been sitting over there in the corner still has the original battery and I don't know how old my radio is these radios have been around for, you know for a right good while but it looks like they still has the original battery or an icon replacement battery in it because it has icon sticker on it so <laughs> and there's no signs of any soldering that's ever been done to it so yeah they last a long time um they say five to seven years they need to be replaced but you know it's 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 not something if it's going to fail it's just one day when it's going to fail and to uh be able to go ahead and change that out and you know at least get it so i can uh read and write to my own module would be great anyway uh more videos to come i'll leave some links down below to the website where i'm gonna be putting a lot of information up and programming files and this and that for the icom 745 751 series so if you like take a look at that you know click the show more tab that'll take you to uh to different links right down below just below the video there you'll see the show more tab anyway y'all have a good weekend holidays are coming up lots to do here in the radio shop so uh we'll see you in the next video